If you really want to keep Maxine off your tail, then I'd better look after her. Brad. Hmm? When are we going to tell your mother about the baby? Are you with Meals on Wheels? Your father and I are... are just good friends. We're getting married. You found him, so what? Has he had another heart attack? He's at his mother's place, and it seems that... The old romantic's getting married. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and this congregation. Oh, it's the gilt on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. Love. You could call it ambition. It's so don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. Love. I, I require and charge you both, as you will answer at the dreadful day of judgment when the secrets of all true hearts are disclosed, that if either of you should know of any reason why you may not lawfully be joined together, that you do now confess it. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. With this ring I thee wed. With my body I thee worship. With my body, I thee worship. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. And with all my worldly goods, I thee endow. I pronounce that they be man and wife together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Yes. You'd have to excuse me. I've got so much to do. Perhaps we could talk later on. I do like your hat. Thank you. Thank you. Alistair, I want to talk to you. He must have told her. I did not. Come with me. Look, I didn't know myself. Thank you for being such a sweet bridesmaid. This is for you. Oh, thanks. It's beautiful. It belonged to my mother. It was given to her the first time she was a bridesmaid. Can I put it on? Of course you can. Let me do it for you. <laughs> there. Thanks. Maxine, I'd like you to meet my... my wife. Your new wife? Yes. <coughs> I suppose that makes me your old wife. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Caroline. Cara, it's nice to meet you. Brad's told me so much about you. Where is he? That's nice. Oh, darling, it looks beautiful. It was such a pity about the dress. Why didn't you talk to me? We could have gone shopping together, bought you something quite attractive. Mum. No, really, I'd have loved to have helped. We could have got you something quite tasteful. Why did you have to come? What are we going to do about her, Brad? She hasn't been very stable lately. Maxie. Actually, I helped to choose the dress. Did you? Well, she is rather an awkward shape just at the moment. Well, what a surprise. You must have taken pity on him. I mean, after your heart attack, Brad. So you nursed him back to life. Well, it wasn't quite as simple as that. No, but it's so romantic, isn't it? I mean, directors and nurses. It's just like a Mills and Boone story. Is it? I'm sorry, I've never read one of those. No. She's up to something. She'll do something to spoil things for everybody. She won't, although I wouldn't blame her. Alistair. She's just registering a protest that she wasn't invited. 
Yes. What a mess. Do you want me to try and get rid of her? Oh, no, for goodness sake, no. That would only give her an excuse for kicking up a rumpus. Yeah, you're right. I will not have this day spoiled. Look, I'll do whatever you want, you know that. Yes, I know. And what would he be wanting in return? Oh, come on. I never thought he'd marry any of them. Damn him, that rules him out for the eligible bachelor story. Don't take too much notice of Magda's gossip. All from reliable sources. I thought you could start on the style feature. Don was doing one on lighting, but, um, well, you could take that over. She hasn't really fired him. She can't have. Gemma still doesn't believe you've really been fired, Don. I'm certainly not working for that bloodsucker anymore. Well, after the way she's treated me, the cow. No, he's not sure either. I'm sorry, Bridget, but I refuse. I can't do it. I'm not taking responsibility for that hat. Look, I'm sure it'll be all right. No, it won't be all right. They are very expensive hats. Yes, I know. How are you feeling? I'm fine, really. Maxine's not upsetting you, is she? If anyone's upset, it's her. <laughs> or champagne? I better not. Brad, I'm not happy about all this secrecy. Your mother should know about the baby. She will, she will. But if we don't tell her soon, she'll be able to see for herself. I feel as if we're deceiving her. We'll tell her. Not today. Okay? It's gonna be all right. It really is. <laughs> Chelsea, you all right? And they're getting younger all the time there. Oh, oh cheer up, sweetheart. <laughs> but she does so look lovely. Not as lovely as you. Oh, you say the sweetest things, my dear. Where did you get that hat? Do you like it? Not a lot, no. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> oh, but I loved your last issue. Nice, juicy scandal. Mm -hmm. We've done well. Oh, I was a bit surprised, though. I thought that sort of thing was truth and gloss. I'm just interested in good articles, Phil. Well, then I could do you a nice, juicy scandal for your next issue. Rich kids, drugs, a few very big names, my dear. No, thanks. We're painting part two in our next issue. <laughs> Try truth. I will. They pay better anyway, dear. <laughs> hello, Jean, how are you? Oh, hello, Sam. Uh, do you know Phil Keegan? Phil Keegan, Sam Wyeth. I think we met at Brad's last wedding, didn't we? Oh! Olivia's certainly splashing out a lot more on this one than she did on my wedding. Oh, do you think so? Mm. This is French. It's always lucky to get Australian. <laughs> Olivia decided that Carolyn deserves something a bit better, since she has no immediate family of her own. But the main thing is that we're building up a really strong clientele, and that's going to pay off in the long run. Alistair, I must go in. Right, but it was what I was saying before. It all comes back Chelsea, to... Chelsea! Come here! What is it? Have you been crying? Was it your mother? Go inside and talk to her, Alistair. Yeah, right. Try and keep her under control. It's going to be all right, dear. It's going to be all right. It's just ridiculous. I shouldn't have to do this. We're supposed to be mature adults. I shouldn't have to lock things away. She stole that hat. That's what she did. She stole it. What you doing? I was, um... I was just... It's OK. Up. Somebody's got to do the feature. I thought I'd get hold of three or four retailers. No, nah, don't waste your time. One's enough. They're all selling the same stuff. Here, give him a ring. He's expecting me. Phil's okay, he'll see you right. What do you do? There's a new magazine starting. Is there? Yeah, it's all a bit hush hush at the moment, but the editor to be's a uh, mate of mine. Be better money than I get here anyway. Well, that's great. Yeah, she always thinks she gets the last laugh. Well, she doesn't. Hey, thanks for this. Maybe you can do something for me sometime. 
I've heard a few names. But then so have you. Oh, Max, you're so confident, so assured. Only you weren't a woman. Excuse me, Phil. I want to talk to Brad. Ah. I was just on my way to talk to you. That's nice. Oh, you didn't do it sooner. Too busy sorting out the souvenirs from Barney. Maxie. The postcards were delightful. We've only been back a couple of days. And you forgot to invite me in the rush of it all. Mother thought it would be inappropriate. I bet. Look, I'm sorry. You will me. Anyway, you're here now. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this to the ride. The next to many. It wasn't very nice what you did to Chelsea. What about me? What have you all been doing to me? I hope you enjoyed the joke. Look, I said I'm sorry. I thought we could have a bit of a chat about Chelsea, but if oh, you're going to... Oh, you should have done that before you got married. She's still my daughter. Oh, be realistic, Brad. You've got a new wife. She won't want the residue of your first marriage cluttering up that tiny flat of yours. Cairo and Chelsea get on very well. <laughs> and Mother's always been very fond of Chelsea. She wants to see as much of her as she can. Let's just get one thing straight. Chelsea is my daughter. Our daughter. But I'm the one who was left to bring her up. So I'll decide what's right for her. Not you, nor Olivia, but me. Mum, I talk to you. Ah! I'm popular, aren't I? Don't push. It is a lovely house. My main concern is the legal position. You should wait until you know exactly how things turn out. You're being silly, Sam. I am being careful. It's all in the family. If you can't trust the family, who can you trust? Let's go down here. Go and wash your face, dear. It's time for the toasts and the speeches. Okay. There's really nothing to worry about. Brad's quite different now. So what are your instructions? Keep her under control? Keep me out of the house? Something like that. Oh, she's an evil woman. I know you're upset, but please, don't make a fuss. Why shouldn't I? Please. I want to keep Olivia sweet. I need to borrow some money off her. <laughs> you are so like good daddy. Mum, please. What? Just don't make trouble. Trouble? Me? Come on, let's go back in the house. We don't want to miss the fun. Fun? I had more fun at the dentist. Come on. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> you do look very beautiful. Thank you. Are you all right? I'm really pleased about, you know, what? Well, about you and Dad. Excuse me. God, you're so fat. Mm. I had a word with her. Thank you. She's not going to make any trouble. Oh, good. Can now, I talk to you for a moment? Uh, later. But I, I must ask not you about it. Quiet! Quiet, please! My grandmother has got something to say. There you go. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to welcome you all here today to my house, to this lovely house. Today is a very special day for my son, Bradley, and his new bride, Caroline. This is your day. Just your style. Cheap.
Have you finished? Have you finished? Yes. Why don't you answer? Sorry. You better be careful with that tin rusts easily. It's not tin, it's silver. Oh, is it? Where have they gone? Who? Brad and Caro. Oh, for the honeymoon. Oh, I suppose that's a secret too, is it? No, it's not a secret. I know. Oh, I'm amazed you didn't go with them. You're all so chummy. Are you still angry about that? Oh, you're not wearing that to school. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Get it off. I want to show it to Tanya. You know the rules about jewellery. I promise. Get it off! You've, you've broken it. I'm you've sorry. You've broken it! You stupid girl! Go on, then! Hit me if that's what you want! Go on! Going to work now if you want to lift to school. Why then? What time? Twelve. But we need to be there by quarter two. Well, that's all right then. No, it's not. Not if she's taking it. But her appointment's at ten. Half past. Half past ten. Mm. Morning, ladies. And gentlemen. Uh, Mrs. Vickman isn't in yet. Oh, wait. Can't you go earlier? I suppose so. It's cutting it a bit fine, Bridget. Well, I'm sorry, but there's no other way. Morning, everyone. Morning. Hello. Hello. Here you are. How was the wedding? Mr. Chapel's waiting in your office. Oh. Like all Brad's weddings, a bit of a non-event. Oh, no. She can't have. She's ruined it. You're early. How was the wedding? Oh. Didn't you talk to Brad? Yes, I, uh, I hear there was a latecomer who caused a bit of a commotion. Must have been one of the bride's relatives. The Redferns are all so terribly well-behaved. <laughs> Maxine, I wanted a chance to talk to you before Carla gets here. About what? This is my Rambert story. And I'd like to talk about the production quality of the last issue. Yes? Yes. Uh, there's a feather missing from this hat. A feather? Yes. You want a feather? You will have a feather. There. Now get out. But you can't get do that. out. Oh, she's so pathetic. Maxine. How much is this new printer costing you? Well, whatever it is, it's not worth it. We have got to go back to doors. Maxine, I want that story killed. Yes. Sorry, I'm late. I was early. Have a seat. Lighting. Never strikes in the same place twice. I thought that was a freezing worker. So, until we've sorted this out with their lawyers, we'd be mad to print part two. Why didn't you pick this up before we published part one? You check the story, why now? A libel of this magnitude what could... What magnitude? It could be criminal libel, and that'd be enough to destroy the magazine. Of course, if the magazine goes, so does your job. I'd like to check this story again for myself. I'll meet you both tomorrow at 12.30. That's fine. Is that it? Oh, Andy's got another job. I'd like to talk to you, though, ask you a few questions. Sure, sure. I'm off then. OK, thanks a lot. Bye. Well, fire away. Do we have...
of style in New Zealand? Style? Yeah, or is it something that's always imported from overseas, like um, Italy or Sweden? Or Denmark. Or Denmark. There's a lot of good stuff made locally. This lamp here, it's made locally. It's nice. Mm. But the best stuff does come from Europe. And it does depend on what you mean by style. Well, I suppose it's, um, well, it's design, really. Mm -hmm. I suppose it is traditionally. But uh, overseas, they have the tradition of art and design. Well, <laughs> the Italians. And the problem with uh, imported goods is the cost. It's the exchange rate. It keeps on fluctuating all the time. Bridget? Ah, Don's story. Go you... through it, see what you can find. What am I looking for? I don't know. Ree Chapel wants it killed. I want to know why. Yes, Maxine. Oh, you like that one? Mm, it's lovely. Oh, why don't you have it? I couldn't afford that. No, have it. On me. What? Oh, of course. Goodness me. A three-page spread. <laughs> oh, it's money in the bank as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I shudder to think what a three-page spread would cost me. That's what it all boils down to. I don't think so. Oh, of course. I was going to give Don something when he set this up. Not a lamp, of course. He's got other interests. No, well, it's there if you want it. I don't want to force anything on you. Grandma, tell me about Dad's other wedding, when he and Mum got married. I think the less said about that, the better. Why? Is it because Mum was pregnant? When I was young, I was brought up with, uh, I was taught, certain attitudes to love, marriage. But things have changed so much in my lifetime, you know. Things are quite different now. I suppose every mother wants the best for her children. I want Bradley's marriage to be a success. Maybe this time it will be. It really is quite surprising. What is? The lengths a mother will go to, to protect her children. I wish you were my mother. I wish I could come and live with you. You sound quite breathless. <laughs> no. Actually, I want to book a table for two. Wrong again. Me and Chelsea. Tomorrow night, about 8 o'clock. Oh, make it 7.30. Nothing special. OK, then. See you tomorrow night. Did you ask your grandmother for money? Of course I did. Well, is she going to give you some? Of course she is. There. Thanks. I have to lock them up. Can you believe that? I have to lock them up. You know why? Surprise me. Because there's so much dishonesty around here. That's why. See you tomorrow. Okay. Been shopping? Yeah. Mm. Take care. I despise that when a colleague is dishonest. What can you do? Max can't hear you. She's gone home. Today, after school. You don't mind, do you? Of course I don't mind. Why should I mind? Yeah. Have you got any homework? Have you got any homework? A bit. Well, then you'd better do it, hadn't you? is 
Esme Rembert story. Mm, what have you found? Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's one of the photographs you'll be using in the second part of the story. And who are these people? Well, that's Esme Rambert, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure about these, but I think three of them are South African businessmen. Seem to be having a good time by the looks of it. Mm. And this person here, good grief, is Reed Chapel's wife. Ingrid! Mm. I hardly recognised her. Must have been taken about ten years ago. Bridget, you are wonderful. But I don't know what any of it means. Reed isn't interested in libel. He's interested in protecting his wife's reputation. And she's a major shareholder. He has lied to me every step of the way. <laughs> mm. I finished my copy. What I do with it now, I just give it to Maxine. Mm -hmm. And then stand at a safe distance with your fingers in your ears. Gemma? Is that the style feature? Yeah, I was just going to give it to Maxine. Would you like me to have a look at it first? Okay. I don't mind. I'll do it straight away. You've written it very quickly. The facts check out. And as for malice, malice against who? Esme Rambert. Well, she's the one that gave us the story in the first place. Her husband's the one in trouble, and we haven't heard from him. Maxine, I'm not... I'd like you to point to specific items that you're worried about. Oh, and uh, here are the photographs we're going to publish. Carla might be interested in those, too. And the photographs look great, Bill. Yeah, it's made a big difference for the whole room. Yeah, well, well it's all done, and I think you'll be very pleased with it. OK? Bye-bye. <laughs> Gemma, about your feature. Is it OK? Oh, yes. Yes, it's very well written. Oh, good. I thought you were going to tell me it was terrible. Oh, oh no, of course it's not terrible. But I'm wondering about the focus. The photographs are great, aren't they? Yes. There seems to be quite a lot about the financial problems of importers. Yeah. I thought that was quite interesting. Mm. Well, yes, it is. Mm. It might be worth having a look at a couple of the other articles in the series. Magda did a very nice one on office furniture. The idea of style is obviously, well, well, it's central to the thing, you know? Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. You give the printing back to Dawson's and I'll drop the story and publish a retraction. I'm not bargaining with you, Maxine. Dawson's lost the contract because they're overpriced. There's a big difference between... The difference is quality and that's what I want. I don't care how much it costs. Well, someone has to care. That's why I'm worried about this story. It can cost us. All right, have it your way. We go back to Dawson's? Yes. As of now. You never let go, do you? Yes. Good. You can see yourselves out. I've got rather a lot of work to do. A new feature to find. Hello, Phil. Maxine, love. No, no, somebody told me you'd gone to work for the World Wildlife Service, dear. <laughs> what can I do for you? That story you told me about. Rich kids, drugs, big names. Have you sold it to truth yet? Good. Oh, well, I think it's fine. Where's Bridget? She went to get some sandwiches. Tell her I want to see her. I finished the style feature. Oh, all right. I'll uh, look at that this afternoon. You sort out the libel. We're dropping part two of the Esme Rambert story. What? What are you going to use instead of it? I'm buying a feature from Cole Keaton. Scavity? Mm. Drugs, rich kids, big names. That'll really give Reed Chapel something to worry about. Oh, there you are. Come on, we've got work to do. It's all go, isn't it? It's amazing. Mm. What is? Well, dropping Don's feature. I mean, it was a really good story, wasn't it? Oh, there's bound to be some sort of reason. There always is. Did you, uh, rewrite your thing? What? Oh, I'll read it through again. I think it's fine. I expect Maxine will tell me if there's anything wants changing. Yes. I expect she will. So, we've got to be prepared for some shuffling around. I don't know how long Phil's story is, but he'll be bringing it in later on. Oh. Maxine Redfern's office? Oh, hello. 
Yes, yeah, she is. Just a minute. It's Chelsea. Mm. Yes? What's happened? What? No, not tonight. Because I'm taking you out tonight, that's why. It's all arranged. Don't you dare. Hello? Damn that child. Oh. Damn both of them. Oh, Bridget, um, we'll do this later. I'll be back in an hour. Maybe two hours. Oh, dear. Maxine, what a surprise. Come and sit down. Would you like some tea? No, thank you. You know why I'm here. You've come to apologize. Apologize for what? For trying to ruin Bradley and Caroline's wedding with that awful practical joke. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you? I came here to receive an apology, not to make one. Oh. You talked to Chelsea today. She telephoned me about an hour ago. And yes. you invited her here for dinner tonight. Hmm. And to stay over, if that's all right with you. Well, it's not. Why? She's done it before. Because I'd invited her to dinner tonight at Alistair's. Oh, well, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm not a fool, Olivia. I don't know what you mean. Do you think I don't know what's going on? Maxine, you're... She spends more of her time over here with you than she does at home with me. Nonsense. Besides, I'm her grandmother. I like to see as much of her as I can. I enjoy her company. Unless you stop coming between Chelsea and me. Now you're being ridiculous. The way you came between Brad and me. That's not true. I'm warning you, I shall stop Chelsea seeing you altogether. I shall stop her coming here. I don't think you can do that. Can't I? I'm afraid you won't be able to prevent her visiting Bradley. Oh, I see. You'll make sure you're in Bradley's little flat whenever she comes to visit. Well, you're right. I can't stop her. But you won't be very comfortable. Brad's coming here to live. Here. I'm giving him the house. Yes, it's a gift. To my son and his new wife. your lunch with Jaime. It's all right. Oh, I see. Well, that'll teach you to take gifts from strange men. What did he say? What about the missing feather? He didn't notice. He didn't notice? After all the fuss you made? How dare he? Haven't you got work to do? Well, well yes, I think there is some. Somewhere. Is it all right? And the feature on lighting, is it all right? No, it's not. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? It's about the most boring piece of writing I've read in years. The article is about style, and the subject is supposed to be about lighting. This has got about as much style as a trussed up chook. Listen to this. The value of the New Zealand dollar over the past five years makes importing. What the hell's that got to do with lighting? Well, it means that over the last... You're not years... writing for the National Business Review. This is gloss. Our readers care about appearance. They care about what things look like, not how much they cost. Oh, it's my fault. You're obviously not ready for this assignment. Working for a rural newspaper has given you some bad habits that you're going to have to get rid of. It's obviously writing for farmers has given you this preoccupation with money. We do things differently here. We're a wee bit more sophisticated. I can't print that. Mm. 
Hello, girls. Hello, Phil. Hi, Phil. Well, there's the Gorgon. <laughs> However does he mean? She's in her office. Thanks. See you later. Do you think I should go after her? You did everything you could. Yes. So, what's the story? Why do you suddenly need that? Mm, wouldn't you like to know? Mm -hmm. Oh. Maxine Redford. Oh. It's you. Oh, no, I can't. Not tonight. Well, I'm taking Chelsea out for dinner. I promised. Uh, wait a minute. Thanks for this. I'll give you a ring. Well, I'm dismissed, am I? Yes. Bye, sweetheart. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Oh, I thought you'd done everything. <laughs> it's all right now. Well, how much later? All right, make it 10.30. OK, bye. Oh, Olivia. It's Maxine. I want to apologize. Oh, hello. Come to do another story. You don't look too happy. It's not getting published. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, well, it's not the end of the world. But I don't know what to do about the Oh, uh, about, about the, the lamp. lamp I gave you. I'll bring it back. You don't have to do that. You keep it. But I haven't given you anything for it. Oh, is that all you're worried about? That's easily fixed. How? Oh, I'm sure we can find something. What about uh, having a drink with me after work tonight? Oh, no, I can't. Not tonight. Well, what about tomorrow night? I'll bring the lamp back to you. Look, I'm not running a second-hand shop here. You knew what the score was. You took that lamp. I'm not taking it back. The lamp's yours. What's that? That's your bill. Go on, take it, or do I have to post it to your editor? I can't pay this. Oh, too bad. All right, all right. I'll take the lamp back. I'll come round to your place and collect it, save you carrying it. You'd uh, better give me your address. to you. Hi, Hi, welcome. Alexandra, say hello to my mother and my little sister. Hello. <laughs> Nothing like a warm welcome. I don't know what's wrong with her. Well, what'll it be? A drink at the bar or straight to your table? Drink at the bar? Uh, I'm waiting. Maxine Redfern. Well, well, well. Max Thorne, what are you doing in a place like this? Same as you. And gathering material for my columns. So mind your table, manners. <laughs> I heard you were dropping the Esme Rombe story and publishing a retraction. Did you? I'm going to the bar, OK? OK. Is it true? Wouldn't you like to know? You know, Rex, you really are full of surprises. Why? Well, from reading your column, I just assumed you always ate at McDonald's. Excuse me, darling, <laughs> would you take me to my table? It won't be a minute. I must get myself a little Maxine doll that I can stick pins in. And then again... Why well, get a doll? You want a Tom Collins? Yes. How old are you? Why? I'd like to know. <laughs> Why? I'd just like to know what I'm up for. Look, Alistair's my brother. The big boss. Do you hassle all the customers? Only the pretty ones. I could get you into trouble if I wanted to. Are we still talking about the Tom Collins? 
All right, then I'll have a pineapple juice. Coming up. What's your name? Greg. What's yours? Chelsea. Chelsea. Very nice. Been there. London. Done that. There you go. So sophisticated. Mmm. <laughs> what do you put in it? Trade secret. Is this what you drink? I don't drink. What, never? No. Nope. What do you get off on? Oh, I like to climb tall buildings and look down on the world just grinding to a halt. I really enjoy hard drugs. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> I certainly hope so. <clears throat> and then today, one of our suppliers had no more credit, so she blames me. It's not my fault. She's the one who wanted a new kitchen. Nah, the bills get paid sooner or later. Have you thought of bringing someone in? Hmm? An accountant, someone who understands business. I've already done that. The business is doing fine, honestly. Just a misunderstanding, a breakdown of communication. It'll be okay. Did you ask Olivia for a loan? Well, she was too busy before the gorilla and I... <laughs> and afterwards, well, she wasn't talking to anyone. I can understand. Sorry. I was worth it to see their faces. I'll survive. <laughs> Oh, I suppose I'd better order. Wouldn't you like to ask that daughter of mine if she'd care to join her mummy? Sure. Who is it? What is it? What's the matter? Mm. Don't you think you've had enough? Oh, please. All right, just half a glass. This is nice. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Look, the way we've been... Oh, here it comes. What? The heart to heart. I knew it was going to come. Well, I just think we ought to talk. Thank you, that was lovely. At home, all we seem to do is argue. And I just don't like it. Don't you? No, I don't. I do not eyes off. <laughs> Why don't we make a night of it? Oh. Order another bottle of wine? No. Go somewhere. Oh, you're going to Olivia's. I don't have to. Just you and me, grapes or abbeys. <laughs> yeah, but she'll be expecting you. I'll ring her. She won't mind. I'll go stay there tomorrow night. Come on, we could have a really great night out. <laughs> Two girls out on the town, huh? <laughs> no, not tonight. Oh, come on, why not? Why not? Why not? Because I have to meet someone else after I've dropped you off at Olivia's. It's business. But why don't we do it another night? I'd like to, I really would. I'd like to, I really would. What trash! Oh, please, Chelsea! <laughs> Sorry, too. My grandmother would be so disappointed. Oh, you're right. I'd be much happier to Olivia's. She really loves having her grandchildren around. She does. There'll be another one soon. Did you know? Did you know Carrie's pregnant? Not many people do. It'd be really nice having a little brother or sister to play with. I'll be able to babysit for them, won't I? I'm sorry if this means we won't be able to go out to dinner so often, but you won't mind, will you? I expect you'll find somebody else. No, thank you. We're leaving. Would you bring me the bill, please? Mm -hmm. Sorry about. It. This place looks so different. It's that. The light. Amazing the difference it makes. You know, it's just your job that's getting you down. Isn't it something else? Well, it's what you wanted the big time. 
And then he said it was going to be easy. And I saw Colin Stewart today. He said you can have your old job back any time. He was joking. I don't know, maybe it wasn't. Oh, Mark. You don't have to stay here. What if you don't want to? Do you want to? No. No, I've got to see it through. God, it's been an awful few days. Every way I turned, everything I wanted to do, there was some fresh obstacle. <laughs> you can laugh. You were one of the obstacles. Mm. This is my first chance to relax since... When and when? Since last Thursday. Was it? The city's on the main. The devil takes the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet seduction. If you're a friend in need I'm gonna tell the truth If you're 